equal mc square in which energy is set equal to mass multiplied with the square of the velocity of light showed that very small amount of mass may be converted into a very large amount of energy and vice versa. The mass and energy were in fact equivalent according to the formula mentioned before. This was demonstrated by Kokrak and Walton in 1932 experiment. You've got it right here. S4 with E squared in conjunction with Spaced Out Radio. Behind the mics, Forest Moon Paranormal's Eric Cooper and the SOR Space Wire's Eric Marco. You can find more at spacedoutradio.com. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. Now, let's travel into the universe. It's S4 with E squared. All right, evening everyone, evening. Uh, welcome to S4 of these squares here in the mountains of Concrete, Washington. Uh, been an interesting day, interesting day. Uh, just to throw it out, uh, the opinions and topics that we discuss in, in uh, S4 of these squares do not reflect that of Spaced Out Radio, our umbrella radio station, uh, www.spacedoutradio.com every night. Nine to midnight Pacific Standard. How you doing, Markham? Oh, doing all right. How about you? All right, all right. I, I you know, I've been looking forward to tonight because I mean, we're 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 wrapping it up. We're we're talking everything from aliens to spirits, demons, and fairies. And basically, uh, tonight we're going to, as a paranormal investigator, what you look for is signs and symptoms. Uh, when you walk into an investigation, and uh, it, there's so many similarities in all of them that uh, we're, we're going to kind of tell you what to look for. So, how's your day been going there, Markham? Oh, it was pretty busy when I first came in, but we seemed to, well, you know, we're a superstitious lot in the lab thing, so let's just say... Things are okay now. <laughs> right, right. You, you don't want to let you don't want the lab fairies to hear you say certain words. So yeah, yeah. Things are fine right now. Good, good. So, oh, tell tell, tell the audience here a little bit about ST six. Oh, okay. Well, I've decided to start a paranormal group. And uh, actually, SOR Team Six was Dave's Dave's suggestion for the name. We were okay. batting names around, and that one came out like I like that. Uh, probably going to keep it to a six-person group for the, just to keep the group dynamics and the drama down. And I kind of feel like 
maybe six is too many, but that way at least I have a pool to draw on, you know, for the investigation. Uh, currently, it's me, one nurse, and another med medical technologist. So, science based group, and we're going to go at it a different way. Um, like I said, we're at, when we say we're doing a scientific investigation into paranormal, and I'm talking, I'm like you, Coop, everything that everything that's not work a day is paranormal. We're talking cryptids, UFOs. We're going to investigate it all. Exactly. And I'll be I'll be making some of my own tech. I've been hitting the math, and the physics pretty hard the last couple of weeks, and uh, come up with some ideas. So. Hopefully, uh, get this thing off the ground, and we'll be able to put some, you know, fresh new content out there. Exactly. Now we have uh, Dave Scott should be in the in the on, on the I'm line here. now. All right, <laughs> and uh, and we got Everett in here too. Good, Holy good. Crap. So we got Triple E and Dave. <laughs> hey guys, outstanding. So you get to go to another Paracon, uh, Dave, come uh, come up in May, huh? Oops, did we lose him? No. Yeah, we, no, okay. I'm here. Okay. Yeah, I forgot to turn my mic on. Uh -oh. Actually, we, we got invited to go speak at the... <laughs> Provincetown Paracon in Provincetown, Massachusetts, which is about 90 minutes east of Boston. And Sam Baltrusis, who's a paranormal author, is putting this on on May 12th to 14th. And he actually asked us to be a part of it because as he he's kind of following the same grounds that you did when you put on the, the Forest Moon Paracon last year was to have a little bit of everything. And he wanted me to come on in because he's really impressed with how we've put Spaced Out Radio together. And basically what he's done here is he's asked us to come on in and talk about uh, paranormal journalism and what are the do's and don'ts of people who want to start up a paranormal radio or television program. Outstanding. Uh, yeah. And uh, you, we're probably going to have you talk in uh, uh, paranormal media here as well. Now, we were discussing that Saturday night, actually, at our, our meeting we had. Um, paranormal, because you, oh, you nice. talk... You talked to experiencers last year, and we're probably going to have a lot of the same people here this year, along with a whole lot of new people. But, uh, yeah, we'll talk paranormal media. So we'll have you uh, pull that topic here as well. I mean, I'm game for that. I am absolutely game. Good deal. Good deal. It's good to have you out there speaking. <clears throat> yeah, thanks, Everett. Well, Everett Themer is, uh, for those of you who don't know, he's one of my, my big-time behind-the-scenes help of Space Out Radio. Brilliant paranormal journalist. And he's, uh, he's actually uh, putting together a package for us at, on Spaced Out Radio, uh, including Eric Markham, to be doing speaking tours around different paracons. And hopefully by 2018... Uh, we're pretty much doing the circuit and getting to a few shows, all of us, to speak about Spaced Out Radio, what we do, and whatever topics that we can speak about, right? That'd be great. So I, I think the nice thing is that we have such a diverse base and a diverse knowledge that every one of us can talk about a different aspect of the paranormal and the paranormal field. Yeah, exactly. Oh, sure. and, 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 you know, it, it irritates me to no end. It, 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 who was I talking to? I was talking to some. Actually, I think I was talking in our meeting uh, in that, you know, I, I went through 3,000 different groups. And uh, when I was cleaning up my web links, and I, I don't even exaggerate when I tell you there might have been between three and five out of all those paranormal groups that even touch UFO encrypted. 
They're all about, oh, look, we went to a cemetery. Um, oh, look, we went, they're, they're all about hauntings. Uh, and that's not what it's all about. It's, it's about hauntings, but it's also about the cryptid side. And as a crisis team, you, it's, we have just as so much crisis with alien abductees as we do with, you know, someone that experienced an entity. So the, you're, you're only getting a piece of the pie when you're, when you're just working with ghosts and spirits. But I think that's become sort of the pop culture poster child of the paranormal. It's what's on TV and it's, it's what's all over the place. So the people who are getting introduced to the paranormal through all these different shows, that's all they know. They don't look anywhere else. They don't get interested in the other aspects of the paranormal. Well, they're doing themselves a disservice in that case because there's so much more to it. Well, well to, to coin, to use Dave, roll out <laughs> Dave's phrase, what they're doing is playing Pokemon Ghost. They're not it, doing an investigation. They're it, just it, out there waving crap around, hoping that they catch a, an EVP or get a picture. They're not, you know, they're not trying to find any answers. And it's not just That's their own... Problem. It, it's not just their own disservice. It's a disservice to the clients that are out there that need that need the help. I mean, where does uh, and the fight isn't just with you know paranormal groups. The fight is you got the ufologist side going. Well, ufology is not paranormal. Um, well, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it, 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 yeah, it is. And it's so not okay. So you got an alien abductee. They've got these strange experiences going on. Where do they turn? Mufon. You know, you Google UFOs, MUFON is pretty much all that comes up. Um, you, and if a, a alien abductee, for example, goes and looks for a paranormal group, the paranormal groups are going, huh, well, I'm sorry, but alien abduction, uh, it's fringe and we don't deal with it because it's not paranormal. Um, so we need to get the word out there that paranormal is also alien abduction so that they know where to turn and maybe wake up some other paranormal groups that will start looking at it a little more serious. But, you know, with the UFOlogy, how much of it is that there are people getting into the field for the scare factor? You can walk into an abandoned building and feel like you're in a place that's haunted. Whether it's haunted or not, you get that scare factor. In terms of looking for UFOs or seeing UFOs, you actually have to put in time just to even have the experience. You can't just magically walk out into your yard and immediately see a UFO where with the, with the haunted building or a haunted cemetery or anything like that, you can walk out there and all of a sudden you've got the creep factor. And uh, I think that's what a lot of these people are going after. Yeah, and that's and that's true. I can get the creep factor just going up my stairs. Well, hopefully, between Markham and I, we get some tech that will expose a lot more with the UFO side, uh, with the with the dish and the uh, EMF that we're going to be working on. Yeah, I'm trying to find a good carrier. Wave and doing the math for the uh, wave guides is a little difficult, and we'll get we'll get it eventually. Exactly. Now let's jump into this list. So I went to about ten different websites on each particular side of the paranormal to get this list together. So it's a it's a pretty extensive list. So we're we're talking spirits. Now what we're going to do is go through each sign and symptom of a spirit or a haunting, and we're going to see where these signs and symptoms fit into other categories. Um, and, and the first one we have, you hear your name called or you hear voices in general. So what do you think? Definitely it's spirit. It can also be demon. Fairies don't call your name, neither do aliens. Anyone else with the input? Well, I got 
kind of wondering about that myself because uh, I don't know if I'm getting either going crazy or starting to become Claire audience. But I'm starting to hear very clear. Like that, God, I hope uh, I hope I'm not losing my mind. But uh, having getting a very strong voice, and it's not always the same tam- timbre of voice. So I'm kind of curious to see what's going on. And I've heard it call my name. But I've also just heard, like, overhearing part of a private conversation type of thing. So I'm a little curious what's going on. Now, have you have you tried getting an EVP with, with it? I'm going to. I'm <laughs> on my I'm on my short turnaround. Uh, my short turnaround days are the weekends. I work 12-hour shifts during the weekend, so it's pretty much get off work, go home, decompress a little bit, and catch some sleep for the next 12-hour shift. So, yeah, I've, I've been assembling. I've been assembling some gear, getting getting a bunch of my old decks uh, reconditioned and good to go. So, I'm going to uh, try. I've got it set up with an array. I'm going to do it when I get home. I'm mm-hmm. going to have a reel going, a cassette going, and a digital going all at once. Now, now, Charlotte's got a good point. With uh, are, are you hearing it outside? Or are you hearing it in your in your head? Or are you hearing it physically? <clears throat> I think it's a little of both. It's almost, almost like it's being projected at me. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I, I try catching. Well, doesn't that go along? Doesn't that go along? You said that aliens don't call out your name or won't use your name, but it seems like there have been a lot of cases of people who have had alien contact that say they communicate with these people or these aliens and they seem to know my name and information and they're communicating, but it's sort of telepathically or, you know, it could be a mix of both. Aren't in some cases aliens using people's name? Um, not that I've been aware. Um, and, and yeah, they do know you, they do, they do know your information that, that, you know, that's beyond a shadow of a doubt and they do use telepathy. But as far as an alien coming into your room and calling your name, no, I've never, never encountered that one. Okay. Now, oh, hang on a second. Now, with, now with the contactee or something of that nature, um, potentially, but I don't think you're a contactee, are you, Markham? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, I don't know. This this is what's getting weird is since, especially this week, because I've been putting so much effort into research, and I think every time I have a new experience or I, I talk to somebody else who has an experience, I'm opening myself up a little more. <laughs> I think as I open up, I'm starting to get more, just more happening because I'm open to having it happen, if that makes sense. Right. Oh, and and by the way, for our listeners, uh, yeah, the Force Moon Paranormal uh, Astral Team and I will be on Spaced Out Radio Wednesday night. So don't miss the show, for sure. I hope not. I kind of <laughs> want you all there. Yeah. Not really. <laughs> they shouldn't miss any show. <laughs> no, they shouldn't. I'm scrolling up here. So the next one we have is footsteps, and that's common. Uh, in, in fact, I'd say in about 8 out of 10 cases, footsteps 
shuffling around uh, knocks on walls, things like that are actually common. And again, footsteps can be spirit or they can be demon. And I say that because I'm, what I'm trying to show is why demons get the brunt of everything is because most of your demon signs are also spirit, right down to scratches. So, moving objects can be spirit, demon, and I threw in poltergeist. Even though a poltergeist is actually technically falls under the spirit or noisy ghost, as it's translated as. But, moving objects, levitating objects, things like that, fairies don't do. Not to my knowledge, not my experience. And you don't usually see an alien moving an object. Well, they, they don't have to get their attention that way. Anyway. Right. I don't think the, with fairies, they have so many other ways to get your attention. And they're a visible manifestation in most cases that are reported. You, you're seeing a fairy where I think the, the scratching, the, the furniture moving type of stuff is more the incorporeal... The, the stuff we can't readily see. Right. So that, you know, it's going to do something like that to be seen. Mm -hmm. Or to make its presence known. Now we have apparitions. Apparitions are generally spirit. I threw in aliens with that one because aliens can actually uh, do come across as apparitions occasionally. Um, with, and then, of course, apparitions. Let me let me ask you a question because you've got more experience in this than I do. What's that? If you see, you know, on a routine basis, you see, say, an apparition moving through a room. Mm -hmm. And it's not; it's a full body apparition, but it's it's dark. It doesn't seem to have dark energy, or it doesn't seem malicious, it just seems like it's somebody going about their business. Could we be seeing, like we think about membrane theory, how the universes are kind of pushed together in a foam like soap bubbles, could that just be a, a, a case where the membrane between parallel universes is maybe a little thin? If you see somebody walking through your, walking through your living room, it might be you walking through your own living room, but you're just that, you know, just, just that little bit out of phase, just enough to be seen, but not really enough to interact. Right. It, it, kind of like the, the, the curtain. And that's possible. Um, and it, it depends on how the apparition interacts with you, I would have to say. If the apparition looks... You know, it looks at you and it seems like it actually sees you, then I might, you know, that's a possibility. But if it seems like it's just replaying, there's a lot of times where it's not an intelligent spirit, per se. It's actually repeating. And I'd be looking at the date and I'd be looking at the history and see if, uh, you know, something happened on that date in history to make it repeat itself. It's like it's stuck in time and it's just in, in a loop. And so if, it, if it's not interacting with you, then I'd say it's the stuck in loop, you know, uh, theory. If it's interacting with you, then obviously it's an intelligent source. Hmm. It'd be a good be meeting yourself and not, you know, I just want, I just had to wonder how many times we see or somebody reports a spirit or an, a shadow person, and it's just they're in, and they're seeing it in their own environment, and it might just be that a counterpart in that parallel universe, or it, you know, the next <clears throat> veil over, and the reason that you know it's like they're seeing us as the shadow person, like we're seeing them as the shadow person. 
And you gotta wonder if some of the times you have this repeated contact, it's just not the two the the two parallel dimensions trying to investigate <coughs> what the other one is seeing. And, and you know, I I often wonder if that's what I walked into in Germany when I was uh, walking in the alley and saw Hitler. Um. And what was odd about that was when Hitler actually looked up and his entourage looked up and they actually saw us. And they didn't act shocked. They didn't act surprised. Because, I mean, here we are, two Americans in Germany walking through, uh, I don't know, a curtain into their time dimension. And, and so I don't know if we looked like Germans to them or if we, uh, I don't know, or if they were just, a, you know, a, a figment of time. I, I really have no idea. I've heard of similar things, though. Uh, there's been, you're not the only person I've heard who served over there that said that they had an encounter similar to that. Mm-hmm. Where they, you know, they just, and I think in the case, when you look at the history of the Third Reich and you look at the emotional fervor that Hitler was able to infect the people with, I've, that had to have left some kind of imprint on the fabric of space and time. You can't have that much frenzy. I just don't, I just don't think you could have that much focused intent and fervor. You know, I, I just don't think it would dissipate. Right. It's still got to be, I would think it's still, it's still there. Or at least it's worth, you know, looking into that it may be. It, that much, you know, you look at the Nuremberg rallies that uh, Lenny Riefenstahl filmed. All of that emotional energy, maybe it weakened reality there. I, I mean, it, it's so, so close to almost like the kind of energy you would use to form a tulpa or another uh, uh, spirit form I'm, oh I got to just wonder if those rallies didn't somehow put a dent in space time there right I don't know I just I just know it was it wasn't unnerving I mean we weren't freaked out we well I guess we were you know freaked out a little bit we were like what the hell um cuz I mean we didn't know how to approach it with, you know, with each other. It's like, and he looked at me and he's like, dude, did you see something weird back? I was like, are you serious? You saw that too. You saw Hitler and his entourage. I'm like, yeah, in black and white. I'm like, <laughs> okay, I was well, just me uh, hallucinating then, huh? Cool. Uh, you know, and like, uh, yeah. And what was weird, if I remember right, because, I mean, again, this was back in uh, 91, no, 92. It was 92, because that was when I left Germany the first time. Um, and I had a nightmare that night that uh, something took over my hand, and I actually woke up because my hand was clenching my leg so tight it was cutting out circulation. And... On the same, you know, while I'm asleep in, in my barracks room, and this is going on, he's asleep in the attic. That's where his room was, and uh, in the barracks. And he actually had a sheet that came down the wall, wrapped around his neck, and started going up, and he woke up choking. Um, so, I, you know, I, I don't know. It might have, I really don't know. It's just weird that, you know, multiple experiences happen the same night. You almost one now. Was he? He woke up choking. Yeah, and the sheet was actually around his neck. And it well, okay. That's <clears throat> yeah. That's that's creepy. <laughs> uh huh. Oh yeah. There's a lot, dude. There's so much, and that's what's cool about Germany is Germany is so you can talk about paranormal to any German because Germans are so open to the paranormal. I mean, hell, and even right down to the government. You know. Well, have you noticed that in places where the dominant race 
or the dominant culture has been in place for, you know, well, Germany, there's been, they, you know, the German people or what, who became the German people have been there since Roman times. So you're looking at, you know, over a thousand years, mm-hmm. I'll just be conservative, you're looking at over a thousand years of constant habituation in an area. Here in the United States, the indigenous peoples, the, the Cherokee, the Potawatomi, those cultures seem to have a better or a more, be more open. Mm-hmm. Whereas the standard American model, you know, the Puritans, you know, the country's 200 years old, the dominant culture are transplanted. And they grew, you know, they pretty much made their own culture on the fly as they went. Right. The melting pot, you know, there's a little bit of Italian here, there's a little bit of German here, some Scots, Irish stuff. You know, what I'm saying is maybe the fact that America, you know, the United States is only roughly 250 years old as far as European settlers. Well, oh, yeah, we're the and youngest their culture country. culture had to remake it. Yeah, and their culture had to remake itself. Maybe that, maybe it takes a while. Maybe, what I'm saying is maybe those indigenous peoples are more open to it because they've had a longer, you know, they've had over 1,000, 2,000, 30,000 year, whatever, you know, what, pick your number for the particular place. And maybe it's a, it's a measure of psychological maturity to be able to handle or to talk about those things openly. Whereas America, you know, in North America or the United States, maybe we're just now getting to that level of mature maturity culturally. I think we still have That's a ways like to go. In Germany, <laughs> well, I do too. You know, we've got another <laughs> seven, seven to eight hundred years just to catch up with like the French or the Germans or, you know. <clears throat> right. But I'm just wondering if that's not part of why, you, like you said, you can talk to the German people about that and they're more accepting. Yeah, much older culture. Yeah, and like, like you Andy said. O'Brien said, you know, two hundred years for Australian. Andy, mm-hmm. I know you're listening. Uh, <laughs> with with the uh, the uh, indigenous, uh, the Aboriginal Australians, don't they have more of a acceptance and more of a paranormal lore? I'll wait to see if he answers in the chat for that, but. It just seems like it, people who have been in place, he says, yes, they do. Okay, it just seems like people that have been in place in their home territory or what became their home territory are more accepting and have a more fluid working knowledge of what we call the paranormal. Yeah, and he's saying uh, yes to that. Yes. Well, there again, it just seems like the longer a people inhabit their area or their homeland, the more accepting of and the more understanding of the paranormal they become. Mm-hmm. And I mean, look at their history. Look but at Eric, the, look look at the history of it, Eric. Why do you think that is, though? I, I would think that in some ways bringing all these cultures together would you know like the u.s or canada where you have a bunch of different cultures that have melded together you would think that that would help bring about a better understanding well i think it might be you might be encountering a cultural version of replicate fade like if you take a Xerox copy and put another, make another, you know, every it progressively gets watered down. I think with these cultures, when you start throwing your myths together, there's elements that fall out, 
and you know, look at in the United States, we even made our own folk heroes. We didn't bring the, the folk heroes. From, we brought them with us, but once we got here, we created Pecos Bill. We created Paul Bunyan. Uh, 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 Mike, God, I can't. Oh shoot! Or Joe. There was one for the steel mill work. Yeah, I mean these. I think because of the way the Industrial Revolution hit the United States as this influx of immigration took place, some of the, I think some of the understanding got lost in the mixing, in the mixing of the cultures. It's like if you take, you know, okay, if I, if my first karate instructor was second generation. He learned from the guy who brought the art to this country. But every subsequent generation, he knew things that the guys that came behind him had forgotten. And I think with you know, what I'm saying, you know, each generation forgets a little bit. And I think it has to be, it's like a pendulum maybe. You lose a lot, and then you just sort of have to relearn it and recompile the the knowledge back together. Mm -hmm. And people wanted to fit in. Maybe an Irish person came in talking about the little people, but they wanted to fit in with a culture, with a group that, you know, the old chat little people, that's not what, what the real thing is. No, no, you know, anyhow. And maybe through peer pressure, we lose some of this understanding. And it takes until the culture gets more homogenous that we rediscover some of the stuff we've lost. You know, the word homogenous just is not used enough. <laughs> Agreed. Homogeneity. Okay, let's talk electronic equipment disturbances. That can be spirit, that can be demon, and that is actually alien abduction. What do you think, Dave? Oh, goodness. When you bring in technology, <laughs> I am so naked on that subject, and I'll tell you why. I'm someone who really had to learn my own, with my own experiences, Eric, on my own, and it's all for me about feeling. I don't trust the technology. I think the technology is something that is is of some sort of help towards what we are trying to find, but I think for most people, they rely too much upon it, and when it comes to the spiritual realm, Hey, and I think you're like this too, uh, Mar uh, Coop, is that you get a sense and a feeling of what is there and what is not. You get a sense of feeling and you learn to trust that intuition. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people may not have faith in their own intuition because they haven't learned what it's about. But I guess what I'm saying is I think you can only trust technology so far. You know, we rely too much on it, and when it comes to something, whether it's spirits or extraterrestrial contact, we really got to learn to trust that gut instinct of what you're feeling and being able to run with it. What's your thoughts? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah no, no, no. no. Uh, the, the question is, uh, basically what we're doing, uh, if you have a client that has having electronic equipment disturbances, what's causing it and uh spirit demon and alien abduction all three of those can cause an electronic disturbance not to mention just environmental like i live next door to a guy who's a ham operator you if you look on the back of most of your electronic devices there's this fcc sticker somewhere on that device that says you know, this conforms to, and there's a string of numbers and, you know, law. It's basically a law that says this device must accept interference from these other sources. So there can be a completely prosaic, run-of-the-mill reason for your, your TV shorting or, you know, it's something nearby is overriding the electronics or it's having to accept that signal 
or it, you know, the, the because it conforms to that law, it has to accept interference from other electronic sources. Right, right. And and the thing, I mean, we have a case up here that we're we're monitoring um, where I so I have my EMF meter and it's pinging. We're in a field, and so you know I follow the ping to see if it were to see how it goes up or down. It's pinging from a transformer box on a power pole, like, I don't know, 100 feet away. Now, the case we were looking at, um, it, it happens at night, and they're large balls of light, and they follow the road. Now, they're moving intelligently in that when a car comes, all of a sudden it dissipates and turns into a mist, the car goes away, it reforms and keeps on dancing up and down the road. Um, that's not alien uh, MOD, you know, uh, <laughs> fairy or spirit is it, kind of what I've ruled that at, ruled that as. Um, and there is actually a sheriff deputy that pulled into the the road, saw this going on, and left. He didn't want to deal with it. I guess too much paperwork. <laughs> But, you know, our, our clients going, you know, uh, I, we, it didn't scare us. It wasn't, uh, in, in fact, he sat there and watched it for an hour. And, you know, it, now it's doing one of two things. It's either feeding off the power, and that's why it's going up and down the road. Or, you know, the power draws it like a magnet. I don't know. Um, uh, what else is in that environment, Eric? Is it just like your standard run-of-the-mill uh, light poles going down the road with wires strung up, or could it be could it be some kind of static electricity buildup in that area? Well, and, then, and that's kind of what I'm, I'm I'm looking. I'm looking at that, but I'm also looking at the fact that this thing was moving intelligently. Okay, by it's, I'm, okay. I'm trying to play devil that you can hear like no, no, I, and, and, and I, I want to picture fine. this. You know, I'm not trying to like pee in your cornflakes or anything. I don't want the <laughs> I don't want the people listening in. I'm trying to wrap my head around what's going on by intelligently <laughs> moving. You know, how are you defining that these things are be, behaving intelligently? Um. I'm, I'm trying to explain it. Let's see. So you've got an open field across the street. You got a uh, the the only street coming into this community, and then you've got you know it's a standard telephone pole with you know your standard transformer box. Um, so the witness to this watched these things. There are like two or three of them. They're large orbs. Um, multicolored. They're bouncing all the way down the road and back. Not anywhere near. They're they're at ground level. They're not anywhere near the transformer. They're not anywhere near the power lines. And when a car turned down off the highway, turned down their road, these things uh, disappeared like like a fog. He said, he, he said it was like a fog. All of a sudden there was a fog and they weren't there anymore. And as soon as the car went by and they saw it was clear, they reformed and they kept on dancing. So if it was static, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm open well, to what. I'm, I'm open possibly, to what. <laughs> well, a an explanation might be, and I'm not saying this is what it is, but right. when you look at the modern automobile, well, the, any automobile in the last 30 years, they have, maybe it's the high voltage of the ignition system that's throwing them off. It could be. Or you know, if the car had a leaky spark plug. I'm <laughs> just trying to think of some of the things we could rule out. Right, right. You know, now, uh, this so, is a so, constant uh, thing, you can keep going through it. On, on top of that, so me and my partner, we went to, and there, there's two mounds in this field, kind of a remnant of fairy mounds. 
So we took, you know, an EVP app. I, I'm not much of a faith. I don't have much faith in apps, but we figured we'd give it a shot. So we took this EVP app, a recording app. Actually, no, it was just like a spirit box. It did the, uh, that's right, it did the frequency thing, frequency hop. And standing outside these mounds, nothing came through. So, like you're not supposed to do, <laughs> we entered this ferry mound, or this, this mound, and it started talking. <laughs> now, I don't remember, you know, I, I, I just, it threw me off that it started talking when you were inside the mound, but it wouldn't talk when you were outside it. So it was like an energy source inside the mound um, that was bringing up conversation. And so, you know, be, between the <laughs> energy source, which it was a good quarter mile from where these mounds are, so I don't think it had anything to do with it. Um, it and I'm, I'm not saying it, it could still be static electricity. That was just the other side of the investigation that, that came up, uh, as well as the uh, EMF with the power surging from the transformer box. Maybe the transformer box is powering the whatever the entities are. Yeah, well, that's I what I'm wondering. It really, that's what I'm wondering. Wonder what the, I wonder what the field effect around one of those transformers would be like. Yeah, and I almost want to call you the know, power how company. They resonate away. Right. I almost want to call the power company and ask yeah. if that's normal. To have that much residue coming out of a transformer. Generally speaking, anytime a transformer, if a transformer, because basically what you're looking at is two induction coils, mm -hmm. and if the current gets too high, they tend to blow up. <laughs> right. You know, they, they, if there's too much current, they don't last too long past that. Like a, a in electronics, a resistor, this is old school, but a resistor never shorts because the minute it starts to let more voltage than it was designed, you know, if it, it's like a dam. It's either working or it's, it, you know, it broke open. So right. Transformers generally work, they've got resets on them. But a lot of times, you know, they blow before the reset can trigger. It is this a uh, pole-mounted transformer? Yeah, it's you know the, the big round uh, cylinder-looking thing that, that sits on top of a pole. Yeah. <clears throat> and I mean, we're across the street from this, and we're still getting a high reading. And you know, I, I'm not an electrician; I have no idea if that's normal. It's my first time having that happen, but <laughs> it's your EM your EMF meter was what was picking it up. It was pick it was pinging. Of course, now that okay, that was the original. Uh, I believe the EMF meters are what they the whole controversy about high tension lines causing health issues is that they, you know, that energy around these high tension lines or around these power lines resonates out from there. Right. So it's probably, so I think it's kind of a given that there's probably a field effect around that transformer and that hole. How and far I, it extends, no, I don't know how we could find out. But. Now I'm wondering... Uh, you know, if you've got that high of a reading, what kind of health effect or what kind of a mental effect can that have on a human? Could that cause hallucinations? Mm -hmm. At the right frequency and the right energy level, yes. Because they can use electrical stimulation under laboratory conditions to cause hallucinations in, like, behavioral science labs and stuff. Right. 
So, you know, and that's yeah, another... Yeah, if it's possible. Right it, on. With your... Uh, next time you're out there, all those power poles have a ground wire going down. Don't touch it or anything. Just <laughs> but make... Look at... Watch it or look at it and see if it's not still... And make sure it's still attached at the ground because if that pole isn't grounded any flux, any field effect has nowhere to go except in that area until it, it the charge reaches high enough potential to ground itself. Right. If that pole has become ungrounded. Maybe there was a lightning strike that burned it out and they didn't think to fix it. You might have some uh, you know, you you might have a power <laughs> a transformer that's putting in this got quite a field effect around it because it's not grounded properly mm-hmm. and these things whatever these entities these balls of light are they might be caused by that or they might be feeding off that if they're entities in their own right they're probably feeding off of it if they're not entities they're just mimicking you know live behavior because it's just the nature of what they are they could be like some form of plasma from the static or from the field effect of that transformer. Yeah, that's possible. Thing is, though, it's not happening uh, all the time. In fact, it was like, uh, I think November that we went and checked it out, and then I uh, found out Saturday night at our meeting that we did uh, that actually they saw it again two weeks ago, so we have to go back out and check that out. I'd like to, I've got them doing a journal um, so we can see if there's a pattern of when it's popping up. You know, is it coming up the third Friday of the month? Is it coming up, uh, you know, uh, once a month, twice a month? That's what I've got them uh, doing right now. Got to go. So, <clears throat> if there is this happening at a time like a peak power demand hour, like is this happening at a? If it's happening at the same time. It might be linked to the current draw coming through that area. This like if this is the time of day where everybody's home cooking dinner, you know, heating the house, getting every it, that that power surge might be a factor to consider. As I recall, this was between 10 p.m. and midnight. 10 p.m. and midnight. So most people are in bed. Most people are turning their power off. Right, the the heat's the only thing going by then. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is, which is a heat. which is a possible surge if they all have electric furnaces. Yeah, because the temperature also drops at night. Right. If there's any way when you with not only these journals, but if your local power company would be. Uh, cooperative enough to give you estimates of, you know, power usage during the times that these are happening. The load in that area. That, you might want to factor that into your investigation. Right. No, and that's why I'm excited about your scientific uh, forms. <laughs> I can't wait to look at them uh, for SOAR uh, yeah, Team 6. I want to go over those Oh, it's at home or I'd read it off. But, you know, that's well, some of the things, okay, I, somebody I showed it to said, well, what difference does it make what direction or what the wind speed is? Well, if the house is, there's a lot of the older houses around here, and if you've got a stiff wind coming out of the north, and my own home is one of those cases, and the wind's 10, 15, 20 miles an hour with gusts up to 30. The wind might be what's causing the sound. I mean, so I'm trying to get all these kind of things figured out ahead of time on this sheet. You know, what was it a windy day? Uh, you know, the weather. Uh, what was the forecast? You know, when you go into the place, what was the time, temperature, barometric pressure? Because I want to see if these parameters, these hard science parameters, have any variability during 
say say there is exactly. activity there. Okay, does the barometric current does the barometric pressure stay steady, rise, fall in a localized area? You know, was the barometer reading outside one thing, the barometer reading during the event either went up or went down? Mm-hmm. Something to differentiate. You know, it may be because if with barometric pressure is a you know, temperature varies from outside to inside. Temperature varies from room to room. Barometric pressure is it's reading thirty point six outside, it's reading thirty point six inside, because that's a, a the whole area is under that pressure. So those those are the kind of parameters I want to see how they're affected by this stuff. Exactly. And that's why my sheet, my initial investigation sheet, has a place for all this baseline data, the, the boring crap that nobody wants to deal with. You know, I want it on there to compare later because those are parameters that I'm going to be measuring all through an investigation. Good. Uh, and, and real quick, I want to talk electronic equipment disturbances. Um, so what you're looking at, you walk into a house, and usually your client is talking, the lights are coming on and off on their own. Well, that could be a wiring short. Um, the TV pops on its, up on its own. Um, anything electronic is coming on, uh, you know, turning on on its own or going off on its own. Um, you, you enter a room, you turn the light off, all of a sudden the light's back on by itself. Um, these are electronic disturbances. Um, also, if you're walking down the street and the street lights are going off on their own, that's usually a sign of an alien abduction. That's not usually a spirit or demon or fairy or anything like that. Um, the electronic disturbances, however, can be spirit, demon, or alien abduction. Um, there's been abduct, uh, abduction cases where, uh, and actually, back in the 90s, people tried to videotape themselves sleeping to see if they were being abducted, and the aliens actually came and turned off their cameras. Um. <laughs> And they turn it back on. Or it so, distorted. Or right. they got, some, in some cases, it just, the effect, you know, it just looked like uh, <clears throat> they got hit with some kind of voltage it couldn't handle and scrambled the picture. Right. One of the things, though, with, when, TV, when TVs come on and off, with, you know, when you and I were kids and the TV turned on by itself. That could that be a power surge. Because... Well, it also could be just some, you know, you had to actually go up and physically turn a clicking switch back then. Right, Now, right. with all these remotes, universal remotes, so many TV brands use the same uh, number when you're programming. A, you know, it could be the neighbor changing channels, <laughs> making your TV And, and, and that's true, too, because that, that happens as well. Changing the channel, turn the TV on and off, turn the volume up. Um, the other thing you got to look at too with okay, since we're talking disturbances, uh, if your kid's toys are moving on their own, um, you know I'd kind of classify that as well. Um, okay, Shar, we're we're going to actually talk about strictly alien signs here later on. Um, uh, again, we're still on spirit right now. We will get to alien. We, we also look at fairy signs by themselves. Um, we're still in spirit. And so scratching and biting, uh, that can be a spirit, because spirits can also scratch, and they can also bite. And it's not just demonic. Um, people like to say, uh, jump on the demonic bandwagon the minute they get scratched. Well, it's pissed, you know, pissed off spirits can also do that. Uh, so can fairies. Um, some of the malevolent fairy types that we uh, have been looking at for the last three weeks uh, can also scratch and bite. Um, so it's not just demonic. That, that's one of the common ones people like to say is, is all the demon is uh, scratching and biting. Um, passing through walls, that can be a spirit, that can be a demon, that could also be an alien. Aliens are well known going through walls and windows. Um, in fact, uh, we'll, we'll get to that with the alien, alien abduction signs and symptoms. Um, let's talk about smells. Here, 
always listen to your senses. Your senses are your your key tools. So your senses are your most important tools with uh, with uh, any investigation. And uh, so smells. Um, if you have a case and just perfume um, comes up. And uh, I, I'm sorry, folks, I'm sitting here reading the uh, chat. No, I'll get to your uh, question here in a second, Char. Um, so if, if you have a case and they just smell, you know, lilac or perfume, uh, I, I, I usually count that as spirit. I count that as a family member. Um, if you have a vile smell, um, okay, like I've explained in other shows and in, in on Space Out Radio, reptilians smell very vile. They smell like flesh. They smell like sewer. Um, but demons also smell vile. Um, it, it, but, but again, it can be a demon or it can be a spirit, because spirits, it's depending on the spirit. Uh, but de uh, demons are known for sm uh, smelling vile, uh, as are alien. Um, now, Shar's asking, how do you tell the difference on the scratching? Well, scratching can be a pissed off spirit. Um, I, I think the difference is if it's the three scratches. Uh, what's your take, Markham? Well, I'll, that's something I want to investigate. When it comes to the scratching, you're, you're talking about something incorporeal being able to tear flesh. So at some point, some kind of matter, some kind of Something has got to be making the scratch marks. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just, I, I don't, you know, I'm willing to accept that maybe it's mental energy or some kind of energy, but it seems like energy wouldn't mimic a fingernail scratch. If these things are causing a scratch, they're, at some point, they are taking on material form. Mm -hmm. you, you don't slice don't slice butter with thought. Well, it, and it, I mean, and it, just <laughs> Yeah, and it takes a lot of energy for a spirit to manifest itself enough to yeah, to it, you know, cut through flesh. So would yeah, would agree with that. Um something somewhere has got to be having an effect, you know, it's got to be, it's got to be crossing over from, you know, non-matter to matter in order to interact. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Uh, now, negative feelings, uh, negative, uh, negative feeling is commonly demon. That one is uh, the higher level demons, which are extremely rare. Uh, you, 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 your common, your more common demonic activity is a lower level, and they're just nasty critters. Um, it's the higher level ones that are extremely, extremely rare, and they're the ones that manipulate you. They're the ones that uh, basically make you commit suicide, and that's how they attack. They don't physically attack you. Uh, the lower level ones do. The lower level ones inflict pain. Um, that's what they're known for. And they're also made known for uh, the low self-esteem, the uh, depression, the negative feelings uh, is the higher level. Um, aliens, reptilians also do that. The reptilians are the ones that uh, actually give you a feeling of dread. Uh, so that can go either one, not so much fairies. Um, oh, and going back okay, to the... I got uh, a question about that. What's that? On the, with the reptilians. Mm-hmm. Because when you talk about the the reaction to them, has anybody ever had enough interaction to understand whether these things are using infrasound? Because infrasound, the low sub, you know, below the lowest bass notes you can you can hear, there's this infrasound. Uh, alligators use it. There's, there's terrestrial reptiles that are capable of creating this, 
and it's been known it actually causes a fear response. This mm-hmm. is the, the impact it has on the body. So, could the our <coughs> reptilian thing that? Could that be a weapon in their arsenal? It could be. It could be. Um, uh, I'd say a psychic, uh, you know, psychic. Uh, and maybe that's where we got our psychic, you know, our, our psychic weapons, our uh, psyops and that kind of thing. Maybe we got them from the reptilians. Because, I mean, the reptilians have been here thousands of years. And in theory, if you go by some of these conspiracy theories, um, which I don't, and, and like I always tell you, you tell you folks, do your own research, don't just take our word for it. Um, but if you go by the Philadelphia experiment theory, where you know the, the the battleship went through supposedly another dimension and brought the reptilians in, because uh, there's so many different theories that float around out there, uh, and supposedly our government met with reptilians uh, in exchange for technology they were willing to give us, that could be one of their psyop weapons, and they gave it to us, and that's where we got our psyop ideas with the ultra sound okay just a theory well it makes yeah it makes sense one of the things I don't like about all the uh, well aliens gave us this technology aliens gave us that technology Mm -hmm. that sort of sells us short (laughs) it it does it does I mean, people have come up with some really freaking cool ideas. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I hop in here for a sec? Of course. Mind? I, I think, though, Eric uh, Markham, and I understand that, you know, we're, we're not a dumb race. Okay, we're not a stupid race. But I have always wondered this even before I got into this field, and I was never really a tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorist <laughs> at this point, you know, which I am now. I'm proud Uh-oh. to say I wear my tinfoil hat very graciously. But why do a lot of people have such a hard time looking at the fact that if you look at World War II, we were slowly starting to develop the jet engine. The Germans came out with it with the Messerschmitts. Okay, we were still on prop planes heading into the 50s. Mm -hmm. And then if you go back to the whole conspiracy that President Eisenhower actually met with extraterrestrials in 1947 in California, when he disappeared for a day and the media called it, or the press secretary for the president called it an emergency dental (laughs) uh, surgery. Right. You went to the dentist. When you look at it. Look where we went from 1940, late 1940s to where we were developing not only mock speed, but bombers that could fly for 16 hours like the B-52, carrying nuclear payloads all over the world. The SR-71 was in development in the early or late 1950s, early 1960s. Where did that technology come from? Where did stealth come from? Where did fiber optics all of a sudden come from? Mm -hmm. And when you have Ben Rich, the deceased former Lockheed Skunk Works president, coming out and saying publicly on camera that we have the technology to get E.T. home again and that we're up to about 850 years ahead of what we are showing the public today, technology-wise, where did it come from? And that's the big question. I think we've done some incredible things, especially with the Internet and over the last 20, 30 years. But to go from propeller planes to the mock speed aircraft within eight years, eight years, 10 years of World War II, Mm -hmm. does that not seem to be a little bit weird? If it were, to me, if it were, this came out of nowhere, yes. But you got to look at from, once Einstein came up, when you look at what the people, the, the physicists were doing at the time, this stuff was coming out of 
Well, some of the theories of what became products that we see take for granted every day were coming out of this physical research. So to an extent, you know, it, it might have been evolving already. Or, you know, the, the climate was right for the technology to evolve. I mean, it was sort of the golden era of, <laughs> of uh, post-industrial technology. You know, you had Farnsworth inventing the TV. You had, you know, the, instead of vacuum tubes, some guy says, hey, instead of these vacuum tubes that break and get hot, why don't we try and do this as a solid state? You know, so you have the transistor evolving from the tube that had been around since, you know, what, the 20s? So some of this stuff evolved, would have evolved anyway. And keeping in mind, anytime there is a war, for some reason that seems to make human beings be super creative. <laughs> Medicine and science tend to have these quantum leaps during times of war. Now, I'm not saying that, you know, there wasn't that the Roswell crash didn't push some of this along like Kelso says it does, did. But I'm saying things like fiber optics would have evolved from radar waveguides. You know, and the transistor evolved as a direct, I mean, even what you call the pieces of a transistor, they evolved from the, the vacuum tube and you know, emitter, collector, base. Those are the same terms on both. So that there's a there's an evolutionary lineage there. But some of the some of the things and it's it's not really when you think about it, you go from a prop to a jet. You more you know that I can see how the jet could have evolved from you know, an internal combustion, a turbo charge, because the, I believe the P-51 Mustang had a turbo, was a turbocharged Merlin engine. You can see how somebody might have been able to make that intellectual leap. It's like, well, what if we get rid of the engine and just do, you know, figure out a way to use the turbo part of that? You know, I can see an evolutionary background for the, the stepwise progression of some of our technology. Then again, I'm also looking back at from a standpoint where this stuff's old news and it's been in the history books for a hundred years. So, but I, I I think that I wouldn't rule out that we might have got gotten some alien technology, but I think a lot of these things there's a less exotic evolution, you know, technological evolution for. Them. And you, you, you kind of have see to, that. You, you kind of have to look also, though, at the jump with the Romans. You, you've got the jump with the Egyptians. You've got, you know, you've got not, not just, you know, in the last hundred years, but jump in technology with other cultures. Yeah, and you look at those cultures, though, the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. What were they always doing? They were always fighting someone. <laughs> and war war creates technological advance. It the does. Egyptians were carving out you know, carving out an African empire. They were always at war with uh, like the Assyrians or they were at war with the Hittite the, Hit, the Hit, Hit, Hittites. Hittites. I mean there, there was always people yeah there was always some kind of conflict going on and the, you know, it's like, okay, <clears throat> we'll move the chariot's axle back. You know, they, they, so, you know, the part of the reason that the Egyptian, just to say how technology makes a leap forward, the Egyptians saw, weren't the ones who invented the chariot. One of their enemies had chariots. The Egyptians are the ones that moved the axle back which made them more agile. So mm -hmm. you've got a case where a piece of war gear becomes better 
or evolves to its next state during a conflict and it gets built on. I've heard it said that the reason rail gauges are the size they are is because it's basically the the, the rail gauge that the freight trains run on is the same distance as Roman chariot wheels. Makes sense. <laughs> All right, our next sign, doors being that- open and closed. Is Everett still alive before we even go any further? Everett. I'm, I'm still here. <laughs> All right. He's listening and taking notes. <laughs> uh, so a door being open or closed, that's actually a common sign with uh, clients. Uh, a lot of people complain about that. And that's a, that can either be a spirit, that can be a demon. Not so much in, in the fairy side, but also with the alien abduction side. Aliens have been known to open doors, peek in, and uh, yeah, and it starts. And it can be also because the heater vent happens to be next to the door, and, uh, uh, you know, you always look at the mundane before you jump on the paranormal. The weather stripping around the door is not as fast. Yeah. Right. Or the, you know, the cat jumped off the bed and pushed the door open. <laughs> so the feeling of being touched or your hair moved, that's commonly spirit. That could also be demon. It can also what? be a somatic response. Just an involuntary could, muscle twitch. Or it could be because your window is open and a breeze came through. Yeah. Or your <laughs> potassium levels out out of whack and your you know, scalp muscle misfires. True. It's not a conscious move, but yeah. You know, I've had it happen on my arm where I've got this, mu- you know, I'm not doing anything, and I'm watching this muscle jump on my arm, just firing right away, and that's not under any kind of conscious control. So, you know, though that happens in other places along the body, so that could also be a an explanation. Right. So lights come on and off on their own. Uh, we kind of discussed that with the... Uh, electronic side but that is another common one uh, you know got you got people that went upstairs turn the light off hour later lights back on there's no explanation for it uh, power surge to my knowledge wouldn't cause that and that, again that's usually a spirit or a, a more more so spirit um, colder hot spots that's usually a spirit manifesting itself. And it could also be a demon. It's usually not fairy or alien related. Um, now, let's discuss cold spots. Uh, the, the theory is with cold spots is actually a spirit manifesting itself, and it pulls the energy out of the air, which makes makes the temperature go down. Now, and that's supposed to be the scientific aspect of a cold spot. Now, would you concur with that, uh, Markham? Well, yeah, because heat energy flow naturally flows. Cold absorbs heat. That's why we have to heat our houses in the winter. Uh, so if something's pulling energy out of the environment, heat is going to be the most readily available energy in a room. So yeah, I would I would concur that that's that makes sense is why you have a cold spot develop. It's right. pulling the heat out of the room or out of that localized area for the energy that's in it. Yeah, no, that's also hey, why... Hey, Eric, can I ask a question about that? Yeah, what you got? Well, okay. If a spirit is manifesting and it's pulling the heat out of the air and people use these thermal cameras and they see a cold spot, if that heat is being pulled out of the air to man to to allow something to manifest, shouldn't there be a warm spot somewhere around it? No. Well, it depends. <laughs> okay. If you think about how thermodynamic that is, got me thinking here. If you have. Well, 
with thermo that I'm trying to I'm trying to run a quick calculation in my head. If you have this might be a clue to what entities are because if they're pulling they're obvious they're pulling the heat out of the air, there's a differential. So there must there whether it's vibrational energy on a molecular level that's lower. It's probably a matter of there's not enough heat to create the hot spot, but it's enough heat to create the... What you see is basically if you were to open up a refrigerator in a warm room, heat is coming into the refrigerator, but the cold air is spilling out of the refrigerator at the same mm -hmm. time. It might be a it might be a, a near equilibrium, or there's more cold to absorb the heat than there is heat for cold to absorb. That's the simple way of putting it. Okay. That on the if it was an <laughs> equation, the cold side the numbers would be higher. You know, there's more of a heat sink than there is heat. You can't saturate the cold, or it takes so much energy to manifest that the cold, you know, the cold that never reaches equilibrium. There's never a point where there's as much cold energy as there's heat energy that would become lukewarm, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? It's a full, the drain isn't enough to warm up the cold spot. There's not enough energy. Like putting a dead battery in a, a device or something, there might be a trickle, but not enough to actually warm the area up. Hmm. Hope I put that. You know, makes sense. Yeah. So now we've got physical illness. We're going to discuss this um, in a lot more detail uh, when we get to some of the other. Uh, uh, paranormal topics. The physical illness is unexplainable and uncurable, and that includes fatigue, sleep disturbance, dreams, stress, and often these leave when not in the haunted. So your your client is getting sick when in the house. They leave the house and they're fine. Um, if they leave the house and they're still sick, well, either they're sick and they have you know need to be checked out medically, or they could have an attachment, which uh, you know, and that's another. A whole other topic, but okay. So if if you're sick, fatigue, sleep disturbance, dream, stress, that can be spirit, demon. That can also be alien abduction, because uh, the alien abduction side, uh, and we talk about dreams later on as well, and as well as sleep disturbance. But that can be all of them. And yeah, in in. First thing I tell people anytime they have a physical illness is, you know, get checked out by your doctor. And uh, if your doctor says you're healthy, then we'll have a look. But uh, I don't play around with uh, illness when it comes to clients. They need to be checked out first thing. Um, migraines, that, that's another one. Uh, Do you ever, like, have... When you have a situation where you have a client say they're... They're fine in their home, or they're 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 ill in their home, mm -hmm. and then you know they leave and like halfway to the store they realize they're feeling better. Do you ever go in there and just do? I'm sure you do, but how do you rule out environmental factors like mold, uh, radon, some kind of, or uh, maybe. Uh, how do you rule out uh, uh, like an electrical problem or mold? Well, or your electrical these, problem, these environmental factors. Right, your electrical problem is going to come out with an EMF meter. I mean, if, you know, if it's got too much right. power pushing, your EMF is going to go off, and you're going to be able to say, "Oh, well, you know, there's a, a plug-in right there, there's a light switch right there." That's the first thing you look at. Um, monoxide detector. Um, if they have one in the home, you check that. Uh, 
and, and I always look for mold. I always look for, uh, and, you know, and that came up in our, because we, we did our code of conduct slash ethics class Saturday night for Forest Moon. And uh, all these things came up. The minute we find an environmental factor, we're stopping the investigation. We're getting our team out of there. Our health is a priority. We're doing this voluntary. We're doing this for free. Our health is, is, is the first factor. We're going to let the client know, look, you need to get the fire department here because you have a monoxide problem. You need to get the county here because you have a mold problem. You know, whatever the case is. And, uh, you know, you always look for the mundane, like I keep saying, before you jump on the paranormal. Um, the thing with Forest Moon, most of our cases, about 80 to 90% of our cases are with the astral team. And working from the astral, they don't have the, the physical health problems so much to look at. They can go in from the astral and see what's going on. And now, if there's nothing in that, which is, this hasn't happened yet. If there's nothing in that house, spirit, demon, uh, or other entity, then they let me know. And I let the client know. You've got nothing in your home. So you need to look at other avenues. Because this is not a paranormal issue. So you might want to inspect your home. Or, you know, check your monoxide meter. Uh, it's, you know, things of that nature. Um, so, yeah, no... And that comes up with the dangers of the paranormal. Um, you don't have as many dangers with the paranormal on the paranormal side as you do with the environmental and health side. Um, and, and that's why with the QRT team, we are going to get fire department boots, for example. Because fire department boots, they're, they're spendy, but ideally by that time we'll, we'll have a funding, uh, you know, a fund site or whatever, to be able to get them, but they actually have steel uh, on the bottom side of them. So if you step in a nail, it's you're not going to get penetrated. Um, but no, that, that's a good question and a good point. But you, your EMF is going to pick up anything electrical, and you know you see a wire hanging down from the ceiling, whatever. Obviously, uh, and that came that came up in our in our class we did. But you don't touch it. Um, get a voltage meter, whatever the case is, but. Black mold, one, causes respiratory issues, and two, can cause hallucinations. That's the worst of them. Like ergot poisoning. Right. So, and that falls in with physical illness. Uh, yeah, first thing, and, and like I explained, when it comes to the dangers of the paranormal, you go into a case physically, um, we, we discussed this with the QRT. Um, I have two astral teams that are dedicated QRT members. And they're going to get to the site before we will. If they don't find nothing, and this person is talking about some crazy stuff, um, we might be walking into a volatile situation. And those are things I need to know as the team leader before we get there. Is this person uh, a psychiatric case? Um, are they a druggie? Uh, do we have a law enforcement situation that needs to be addressed before we even get there? Uh, you know, things like that. When it comes to the dangers of the paranormal, there's more mundane dangers than our paranormal side overall. You guys still there? Sounds like my... <laughs> yeah, I, I was thinking of uh, back in the oh lord back when mom was still a teacher so we're talking 70s yeah mid 70s one of her uh, teacher friends investigated hauntings back before it was trendy mm -hmm. and he always carried and he always carried a gun and mom would been a smart ass one day he says, Well, you know, Ron, what good's gonna happen? You know, what good's a gun against the spirit? He said, Absolutely none. Ooh, right. But if it's not a spirit <laughs> but if it's not a spirit <laughs> they're in trouble. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And, and that and that's another of uh, the code of conduct is we don't carry weapons, but if it's a situation where you might be in danger then uh, when will be authorized. Um 
Next case, uh, we have uh, objects missing and reappearing, sometimes in our location, shiny things, keys, etc. That, my friend, is a fairy sign. Um, uh, that can be spirit as well, but that's spirit or fairy. Um, and if you ask Dave, uh, you stack up some coins and they get moved, that can be alien abduction. <laughs> okay, I got a question on that, because I have personal experience. Is the preponderance of that activity spirit or fairy, or is there really a difference? Is one just as likely to do it as the other? Because uh, I, our old house that we moved out of, first couple of years my wife and I lived, we had some of the most horrible fights because she would move something or put it away and she, in some inobscure <clears throat> BS place. She wasn't doing it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, you know, and I just, I had, I was trying to replace a... Oh, uh, an oxygen sensor on a car, and I have the tool for that. Went to the toolbox, it wasn't in there, dumped the toolbox out on top of a clean, empty workbench, went through everything, it wasn't there, I put each piece, you know, each piece out back in the toolbox individually, Close it up, went up, bought a new one, went to put it in the toolbox, and guess what was in the toolbox? The oxygen sensor socket that I'd been looking for. My wife was with me the whole time. So I know she didn't like slip in there behind my back and, and do that. Because, I mean, we left from the shed, you know, the toolbox to go get the part and then come back. And the toolbox was with me the whole time because I was working out. So we finally realized uh, there was something in that house that was, you know, apparently feeding off of that negative energy. Because when I'm doing a project and my crap's not where I want it to be, I get mad. Character flaw. And this thing was manipulating me. Well, it was manipulating me. Because I was, but then as so as I raised my voice at her, she's not going to, you know, she's not a hot house flower. She's not going to take that crap. Mm-hmm. So you get all this arguing and this just incredible negativity, and it almost felt like it was being stoked. Like you know, this is not really this thing that's missing is not really that important. Why is you know why am I so damn mad about this? So. Were we looking at a fairy, or were we looking at a, an entity, uh, like, like a, a spirit entity? Here, here's, here's my thing with, uh, well, okay, with that answer. Uh, fairies are usually very, they, they like shiny. So if it's coins, if it's uh, jewelry, uh, anything shiny, the, the, the fairy is going to go after. Thing with fairies, too, if you find coins, fairies will leave you gifts at times, uh, depending on the fairy. Um, now with spirit, if it was something that was like an heirloom or, you know, jewelry, things like that, you have to kind of look at what the object was. Hmm. Anything that was needed to get a job done, a lot of times, Mm -hmm. I would go to do a project and, you know, 15 minute project turns into three days because I can never find the tool. And I put my tools back where they belong or you know at least in that area (laughs) it's like you know i'd go to do something or just in conversation oh yeah i need to use that or let's do this and i'd go to get whatever the the critical piece was and it wouldn't be there and i might have just seen it the day before i'd go to the drawer oh yeah i know where that's at pull the drawer open and it's not there you know, right. Sometimes that's just your memory's faulty, but not every time. Not every time, no. Had, like I said, that oxygen sensor socket disappeared the day I needed it. And as soon as I, and by this time, me and the wife had gotten wise of that crap. And I just, I, we, I didn't raise my voice at all. I just said, oh, hey, you up for a trip to Harbor Freight? 
But this, <laughs> we went up, got a new oxygen sensor, came back, did the job, and get. And when I went to put the new one away, guess what? The old one was right there on top of the was right there on top of the <clears throat> pile of tools inside that toolbox. I didn't put it there. She didn't put it there. So <laughs> I guess I took the fun out of it by not blowing a gasket when I was trying to find it. Yeah, because okay, that, that could be a mischievous fairy or a, a mischievous uh, spirit. I mean, uh, as, as well. But it, again, it depends what it is. If it was shiny, then it, it's generally fairy, unless it was an heirloom. If it was like an heirloom uh, or something like that, then I would say it was a, a family, you know, a, a family member type spirit. Mm. Oh, like if Grandpa's coin collection goes missing or right. a mercury dime for Grandpa's. Yeah, okay, I got you. Right. Uh, or Grandma's, you know, brooch, uh, you know, uh, jewelry type stuff. Um, and now we got. Uh, that. <laughs> what's up? Okay. Well, my grandmother had a friend of hers went out west. This is back year, you know, I probably five or six. Anyhow, brought her back from Arizona this beautiful silver bracelet with a big old chunk of turquoise in it. That has disappeared. Hmm. <laughs> Mom doesn't have it. You know, there's probably a pros. You know, I have moved so many times in the last 20 years that it might have just gotten lost in the shuffle or something like that. But, you know, that was, you just, when you said grandpa's broke, I had to just say, hey, yeah, grandpa's broke. Right. It's in the corner of a closet or something. <laughs> All right, so we got unexplained shadows moving on their own and also movement in the corner of your eye. Well, that can be a spirit, that can be a shadow entity, a fairy, um, with with uh, both of them. Um, shadows moving on their own, there are shadow entities. Don't ask me what they are. I really can't give you a good answer on that one. Um, it's just an entity type. You might be able to find out a lot more on Wednesday when the astral team comes in. Um, all right, and Dave's got to run. uh Awesome having you here, Dave. Thank you. And just so you know, you'll probably, because Everett's on my feet, I believe. Right. You might accidentally hang up there, too. So. All right. We'll talk to you right. later, too, Everett. Good night, Everett. Good night, Dave. You guys have a good night. You, too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Always a pleasure having them on the show. So movement on the corner of your eye, uh, yeah, that, that can be, uh, on the mundane side, that can be your eyelashes, obviously. Um, I attribute a lot, a lot of them, and same with sparkles. Uh, if you have sparkles in your eyes, that can be a migraine. Uh, I would rule that out before anything. Or it can be a fairy. That's generally also what... It can be. It, it can be the difference between the rod cells and the cone cells for real. The peripheral, it, it can be an illusion because your eye tracks and all of a sudden you're picking up a detail with your peripheral vision mm -hmm. because they're more, your peripheral vision cells are more sensitive to light. Okay. Nobody that's ever done a lot of amateur astronomy knows that sometimes to see a faint deep sky object, you look to the side of it. So you can pick it up in your peripheral to actually view it. That can be, you know, another cause for that effect. Got gotcha. you. And, and that's and that's why it's so awesome having you as a scientist on the show, because <laughs> we actually you know, get a well, lot more. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to like rain on. I just so if people if they don't know. I do believe in the paranormal. I have had my <laughs> share of, you know, I'm not, I'm not pissing in Eric's cornflakes and just trying to come up with mundane reasons for everything he throws out there. I'm just adding to the cause. But no, I am not. I, I am a skeptic, but not a de uh, debunker. I have had my own experiences. Uh, yeah, I I believe full bore in the paranormal and the supernatural. 
Exactly, so, but, just, but it's always. I just don't not, want everybody to think I'm laying this stuff out just to try and. No, uh, it's always nice to know that there's. <laughs> the, there, there are other mundane, ex, you know, reasons out there than just you know. It's not just a fairy. It could be a medical condition or a, uh, a you know condition with your eyes or whatnot. And it's always nice to know there are other mundane reasons that you didn't think about. Yeah, and it might be. It might be if you if this just throw this out there. One of the symptoms of glaucoma is you right. see flashes and. So if, as a person, if you are out there experiencing this, you know, seeing this stuff out of the corner of your eyes or these flashings, and you haven't had your eyes checked in a while, I would rule out, you know, the beginning, catch glaucoma early before it does any damage. Yeah, That's most our, definitely. Our, <laughs> that's our public safety, public <laughs> health safety announcement <laughs> for this episode. <laughs> exactly. All right, so we got sparkly lights on your ceiling or wall with no reflection. I mean, there, there's no way to, to, for it to be a reflection. I've actually had this happen. Uh, it was kind of freaky, and it was kind of cool at the same time. Um, these are common with fairy, <laughs> and these are common with fairy uh, with alien abduction or aliens. Um, so what had happened was <laughs> I'm laying in my bed, and it was like little tiny, tiny orbs. But they weren't orbs. Just little tiny flashes of light, and they were just—they were moving around. They're like dancing around the ceiling, literally. Um, that can be a fairy. Uh, uh, that's not spirit. Most definitely not spirit. That's uh, either generally a, a fairy sign, or it's well known in alien abduction. What causes? I'm really not sure. Does anybody know? Just really not sure. Um, not sure if it's a plasma energy or... It could be a plasma energy. It could be just energy in general. Um, many fairies are... Uh, here's the difference between regular orbs and fairies. Fairies are usually a colored orb. Um, like the, you know, the blue orb picture I've got from the Northern State uh, Cemetery. Um, fairies usually show up as colored orbs. Um, so that that's one difference, um, and, and I, I don't hold a whole lot of faith in orb pictures anyway because most of the time it's dust particles. Um, but if dust you have an orb, lens flare, you know. right, right. But if you have an orb that's actually moving intelligently on its own, um, things like that, then okay, you might have some, or if it's a different color. So feelings of being watched. Now, that can be a spirit, entity, or an alien. Um, now, if it's in the woods, I would say it's a fairy or a cryptid. Because Bigfoot will make you feel watched. So will fairies. Um, in your house, that can be a spirit, an, another entity type, or abduction. Abduction does too. Uh, just like when Dave was watched through his window by an alien while he was on the show. <laughs> yeah, that's just instinctive. We have that sense. It's probably not a it's probably the reason we're still around is, you know, when that tiger, that saber tooth tiger was staring at us out of the reeds, we got that. Right. The people that passed their genes on for the ones that skinnied up a tree before they got at. <laughs> exactly. And, and like Char said, or to the, like Char said, it could be the FBI. And that's possible, too. Yeah. <laughs> hey, with uh, on the alien abduction part where you see the... Is it actually, do you think it maybe it's a, let's say, an effect of the alien energy? It, it's The light's not really there, but we're perceiving it because the energy is, I'm thinking about the astronauts up in the space that like Corey, Story Musgrave saw these wild flashing lights while he was up there and of course NASA's excuse is well that's just you know space particles radiation particles whatever making that happen mm -hmm. but you know there there's a similarity between abductees experiencers seeing these lights and astronauts having that same 
Uh, is it cosmic rays causing it down here and up there, or did they were they in close proximity to a alien ship up there that was cloaked? Maybe you know that's. I don't know. It, it could even the be their technology. It, it could it could yeah. even be their technology doing that. Our body's reaction to their technology. Yeah. Possible. Hmm. I just know it's it's really cool. <laughs> it's really it's really cool to look at. Uh, and again, I don't know if it was fairy or if it was uh, you know an alien uh, interaction. That particular, that was back in the 90s that this happened. Haven't seen it since. Uh, but we also had a lot of fairy activity going on, too. So, uh, ne next up, we have animals and pets. They exhibit fear. They growl at the unknown. Um, your, your animals, cats and dogs uh, especially, can see in the third and fourth dimensions. Um I actually had a chow, and I've told this before on Space Star Radio, but I actually had a chow that uh, I got a metallic, like a penny taste in my mouth. Um, I was in Bad Vinsheim, Germany, and I had a chow chow. And he actually looked at me at the same time this was going on. He looked at the ceiling. There was nothing there. Um, he actually... While looking at the ceiling, follow this thing that wasn't there. I, I had no idea what it was. Uh, I think it was an alien today. Uh, but it followed him into the living room and actually sat down and whimpered like he was told to sit down. And this lasted about 10 minutes and disappeared. Everything was back to normal. Um, the, the taste of my mouth disappeared. Uh, the dog went back to normal. Everything. Um, so yeah, always listen to your animals. Your, if your animals are sitting there spaced out looking at something off in the distance, um, if they're scared of a certain room, um, fairies can uh, interact with some cats and dogs. Most cats are scared of, uh, they're enemies of fairies. Uh, it depends on the cat. Um, but if all of a sudden they get frisky and they jump around, that can be a fairy interaction. Um, I wonder about that. <laughs> um, My we're off. cat was going nuts the other day like that. He was just romping. The other cat was watching him, <laughs> and it, it looked like he was having a hell of a good time. And it's like, he, what the heck? <laughs> I was watching the. Or I know he, he has reacted before. So. Or he got into the catnip. I have. I thought of that, and I looked to make sure the catnip stash had not was because he'll he'll <coughs> yeah, he'll help himself if I don't keep it out of reach. <laughs> I'm home. I, I bought a huge bag of catnip one time, and I and I put it in a drawer in a uh, cabinet door in the kitchen. I came home and that crap was everywhere. That smart ass opened the cabinet, had seen me where I put it, or it could smell. Anyhow, long story short, he got the can down and that that crap was everywhere. I'm sure the people living in that apartment in Maine are still finding catnip. <laughs> but no, the, the catnip was intact and he was just... It, at one point, it was almost like something was chasing him. He come barreling down the hall, jumped into the TV room, and then as soon as he was through the door, I mean, he was faced back out toward the hall like something. He was expecting something to be back there, and he was alert for it. Right. So I, I've got some kind of weird activity going on at the house. I guess I need to start to... <laughs> Putting the cameras out, doing some work there. Well, try talking to it. I do, yeah. I do. I mean, I honestly, it's like turn, the turn other on day your, I felt. Turn on your recorder and uh, start asking questions. Okay. I just talk to it. If, when I get that feeling, I just talk to it like the other day. I felt like there was something in the room and I was about to watch a movie 
Mm-hmm. I said, here, have, you know, I cleared off the seat. Here, have a seat, watch the movie. You know, like, you know, whatever. I don't know that I got into the movie, so I don't know if I, you know, I didn't know if I felt like I wasn't being watched or, you know, I'm not going to say I felt like there was something watching the movie with me because I didn't. I got right. into the movie. But, uh, huh. A lot of times I just interact like it's a person, like a friend that dropped by. But, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, here, have a seat. Let's watch the movie. I don't Okay, now we're up to fairy signs. We're going to go over this real quick. Um, so spheres of light are orbs. They're usually colored. Now, that's that's a fairy sign. Uh, again, that's also a potential spirit. Um, also, the sparkles of light on your ceiling as seen above. Um, that's also alien abduction and fairy. Chilling music heard from an unknown source. That can be fairy. Uh, especially if you're in the middle of a fairy ring, which we're getting to now. Fairy, fairy rings, uh, that's usually a, uh, you, you'll have like a ring of grass. Uh, you know, the, the actual ring is darker green than the, what's, you know, the grass in the middle of the ring. Uh, also, you'll oftentimes see fairy rings of mushrooms. Uh, that's common. Now, you're not supposed to go into the middle of the ring. Yeah, uh, that's uh, actually seen as disrespectful. Um, like like uh, we so did. You're probably not supposed <laughs> to run over it with a lawnmower, right? Uh, I wouldn't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> That'd um, why I was having all my crap disappear at that old house. <laughs> right. No, I just, you, it, oftentimes, you, if you leave it as a gifting site, uh, you know, uh, what, when you do a gifting site with fairies, uh, they like cakes, they like... Uh, uh, honey and honey mixed with milk. Um, that, that's a common fairy gifting or anything shiny. Um, if you're walking outside and all of a sudden you get the, or even in your house and all of a sudden you get the scent of flowers, that's usually, uh, uh, one of the nature fairies. Um, sense of warmth on your skin, that's a fairy sign. That's the, their, their energy or actually we're getting to the other one. But yeah, the the sense of warmth on your skin all of a sudden and it happens out of the blue. Uh, it, it's you know a, something su- su- something sudden that is usually a fairy sign. Uh, being watched in the woods uh, that can be Bigfoot or any cryptid as well as fairy. Uh, jewelry and shiny objects go missing. This one's kind of funny, but milk and beer go bad unexplainably, and candy is missing. So uh, you've got milk, it goes bad. You, you, you know, bear in mind you didn't leave it out of the fridge or the power didn't go out and, you know, the fridge turned off. Um, but if you have unexplainable reason for your milk and beer to go bad, well, the fairies may have gotten into it. Um, sudden light breeze comes out of nowhere or the leaves blow around with no wind. Those are also fairy sounds. So now we're up to alien abduction. Alien abduction uh, signs lost time. And again, like I always tell you, every time we talk about alien abduction, I I just want to put this out. You, yeah, I I look at, I I look at these as, you know, you have common patterns. Um, Just because you have one or two of these does not mean you've been abducted. Um, There's a set of patterns that I kind of go by. Uh, Because I've been doing abduction and UFOs for over 20 years. That's kind of my my specialty. Um, So you you don't need to freak out if uh, all of a sudden you have like two or three of these signs. uh, Because it doesn't necessarily... There's a bigger picture to it. So with alien abduction, you got lost time. Um, That can happen with the fairy uh, world as well. Um it's more common obviously with alien abduction but it, it can happen with fairies um, unusual marks on your body uh, with alien abduction uh, you have unexplained scars that appear overnight you have scoop marks that appear overnight uh, laser cuts and series on the ankle wrist or back any scars which you're unable to explain where you got them but all of a sudden you have them and it happened overnight um, did your husband or wife kick you in your sleep and you got a bruise um, you know, there's, are you anemic? 
Um, are you low on iron? There, there's a lot of things you look at with that one. And Markham can probably. Well, you could get up. And, I know as a diabetic, I have to make frequent trips to the restroom in the middle of the night. If you end up with shin level, yeah, I've done it for so many years that I think half the time I bang my shin on something. I don't wake up enough to I just basically wake up enough to do what I have to do and then get back in bed and immediately fall asleep. Right. Uh, uh, platelet disorders. Platelets are what form platelets are what form the beginning of a blood clot. Certain platelet disorders will be manifested by bruising, easy bruising, you know, spontaneously uh Spontaneous bruising occurring. Uh, B12 folate deficiencies can cause bruising, you know, spontaneous bruising. There's, you know, there's a few. If you start having that kind of thing happen, you might want to go, you know, I would suggest go to the doctor and get your B12, your folate, and, you know, have a plate function study or something done. Because, uh, you know, there might be a, nor uh, you know, a mundane cause, but it's a serious cause. It's probably more serious than even the supernatural version. Right. Now, now Char's asking, uh, are the scoop marks in patterns? Uh, with the scoop marks, no. Now, <clears throat> back in the 90s when the Greys actually first started doing the uh, alien hybrid program, uh, the first sign, besides the missing time, women would wake up with a triangular pattern of puncture marks on the lower abdomen. Um, that was like kind of the of that was kind of the first sign, and I've actually seen this personally. Um, and and I'm kind of jumping the gun with the uh, the signs and symptoms here, but here, here's the 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 organization of pattern. Uh, with the hybrid program, the first sign would be the triangular shape, the, the triangular pattern of puncture marks on the lower abdomen. Then the woman would have a pregnancy. Now, the gestation period with the hybrid program was about three to four weeks, if I remember right. And all of a sudden, the fetus is missing. Like they weren't even pregnant. I mean, obviously, they still got the hormone. They've still got, and, and it baffles doctors because when they go in, in in my case, we went to an emergency room, and they knew that she had been pregnant, but there was no fetus. The hormone was there. They knew that she had, had been pregnant, but there is nothing there. And prior to this. This woman had dreams of being abducted. She had dreams of being in a nursery. She had dreams of being forced, uh, actually seeing fetuses in jars in this quote-unquote nursery. And later on, being re-abducted and being forced to hold this baby, to bond with it. Um... And that was, you know, back in the 90s. Today, you have more abductees from what I'm experiencing. <clears throat> They're actually being uh, abducted by the hybrids that they actually created. Hmm. Um, and they're a lot more calculated. They're a lot more uh, emotionless. Um, back in the 90s, when this first started... Um, there was some kind of emotion, uh, not not. You know, they they didn't feel bad. It was nothing like that. But they're uh, you know, they kind of cocked their head or you know whatever. And it, it it's kind of hard to explain. I'm trying to think how to explain it. But today, you will find that the grays that are taking them. They don't cock their head. They just <laughs> laugh at you and snatch you up and you, you go. <laughs> um, 
Do I think the okay? So Shar's asking, do I think the Greys are robots? No, I, I don't. Um, I think what you see portrayed as a Grey uh, is, is is an exoskeleton. It's a shell. It's kind of like a suit, and they don't look like that. They they just yeah. Um, I think that's kind of like an environmental shell. Hmm. That makes sense. Because when you think about this and this alien to them alien environment, right? I mean, we wiped out entire races of people, indigenous people in the Americas, just with our homegrown diseases, mm-hmm. things that the natives, the American native, didn't have immunity to. We called it the Black Swath, and you could actually follow where the Spanish had been, the Spanish explorers, by the death they left in their wake. And it wasn't just they were killing people, it, they would interact. It might have been a peaceful interaction, and oops, we shared a drink, and now you've got all pox, <laughs> whatever. Right. And, you know, these old world diseases were not... You know, these people didn't have any kind of resistance to them whatsoever. No. Now, uh, and what, what what you folks need to understand, uh, there are 16 different subspecies of the gray. Um, if you look at, you know, uh, the cover of Communion, uh, if you look at some of the movies and you see a portrayal of the gray, that is kind of accurate what they look like. Um but there's 16 different subspecies, and out of all the 16 subspecies of gray, only one of them is good. That one doesn't come here. Um, the matri- or th- no, the right. matri- the bad one. Go, go back in our S4 archives and listen. There are three different shows of the alien races, and you'll hear about the grays. I believe it's uh, episode one of the alien race shows that we did, because we covered the reptilians and the grays in one one uh, shebang yeah, kind of. I think it is. Yeah, um, I think you're right on that. But uh, so all these gray subspecies, they all work for the reptilians and the other malevolent species. Um, they're a slave race. <clears throat> uh, a few of these slave races don't like what they're doing, um, but they have no choice. So. On that, our next uh, sign of abduction is tapping or humming noises. Hearing these sounds upon odd occasions such as bedtime or just prior to sleep. So this is like a vibrational noise, tapping, humming. That can also be spirits. Spirits tap on the walls. Um, Humming noise, that is solely, solely alien abduction. We already covered this one being watched. That's a, you, you get a feeling of being watched during or just prior to sleeping. Um, that can also be spirit. That can be, be that can be demon. If you're in the woods, that's usually Bigfoot or, or fairy. Um, sleepwalking. You wake up in a different place from where you went when, when you went to sleep and you don't know how you got there. That can be a uh, sleep condition. I would ask for a sleep study to be done before I rule out, you know, before I rule alien abduction or anything else. Uh, get a medical checkup on that one. Uh, or it might have just been one hell of a good night, on, a successful it, night on the town. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. Um, you, you saw a UFO. Uh, okay, so personally I've had three different UFO experiences. I know for a fact I have never been abducted. Um, and, and again, I've done UFO and abduction uh, research and uh, worked personally with hundreds of abductees since the early 90s. So this is nothing new to me. Um, I had two UFO sightings in Germany. One was in Iraq, one was Syria. Could have possibly been an experimental craft, but I had uh, actual uh, flight crews that were with me that witnessed it as well. They said, you know, that's not ours. <clears throat> uh, still could have been an experimental craft that they weren't even aware of. You never know. Um but it's common. Uh, the Betty and Barney Hill case back in the 50s, 60s, um, they saw a UFO. The UFO stopped them. They, it, it took them. Uh, and that's common with abductees. They see a UFO, and all of a sudden, they see the UFO leaving. 
and there's two hours of missing time. That's common. Uh, or, yeah, strange lights in the sky. Um, need to travel. You have a strange compulsion to walk or drive to another location without any explanation. That's generally an abduction sign. Uh, or, you just have a compulsion. <laughs> so, hey, I, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, they played that up. They kind of played that up. These things have been known for a long time because if you think about some of the symptoms that the signs we talk about right. were incorporated into close encounters of the third kind. You know, that whole, I gotta go to uh, what the Devil's Tower Devil's Wyoming, where the guy built the Devil's Tower Wyoming. Yeah, the guy built the thing in his yard, you know, his, on his table. You know, Out of potatoes. The compulsion him to get there. Oh, yeah, that one scene where he's, like, doing it with the magic. He, he built Devil's right Mountain out of the potatoes. <laughs> uh, but, oh, yeah. Where he tore his whole house and all his landscape up to make the big version of it. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, and again, we have unexplained medical problems. Now, with abduction solely, you have, okay, so a sudden illness. That could, like we talked about earlier, that can be spirit, that can be demon, that can be... Uh, not so much fairy, but that can be abduction. Uh, sinus problems. Now, the reason you have sinus problems is because uh, one of the old-style implants they used to put in humans uh, was actually in the upper sinus. Then they switched to behind the ear. Um, now you see uh, implants being put in the arms and the legs, things like that. Uh, the, the next one we have is fatigue. Migraines are common with abduction. So are rashes. And that could be because of the environment they take you in. Uh, could be also radiation sickness, uh, things like that. You have hair falling out. That could be radiation sickness from being in their craft. Um, that's happening in a few cases. Uh, the fatigue because, well, you didn't really sleep. Uh, nosebleeds, uh, and that comes up later, but I'll bring that up now because it's unexplained medical problems. Uh, nosebleeds that can also be because you're sleeping and, uh, you know, the air is dry in your bedroom. You need to put a humidifier in there or something. Uh, so, you, you know, again, uh, I always, you have to be real careful with medical problem, the, the medical side of it, because you don't want to sit there and say, yep, you're an abduct abductee, when in all reality you have a very serious medical condition that because a paranormal investigator told you one thing and didn't have you checked out, uh, yeah, it's like, oh, it's not an implant. You've got a you've got a nasal lining tumor growing in your exactly. head. Exactly. So you always look at the medical or the psychiatric um, before you jump on the paranormal. Pretty much um, just like they do in cases of exorcism. They try and rule out, <coughs> okay, is this person crap house rat crazy? Are they on drugs? Or is there really something causing problem yeah so next we have unable to sleep you experience insomnia by way of nightmares dreaming of ufos or being devoured by animals with large black eyes okay let's talk about large black eyes for a second uh so what the aliens do they do a screen mask or a, a, a yeah screen masking um and most people don't remember they've ever been abducted. They just know they're having weird signs, you know, and uh, bruising and unexplained scoop marks. And they, have, they, they, they call you and they, they tell you all these different signs they're having. Um, but don't, they don't remember anything. But they know they're scared of owls or they're scared of deer. Big eyes. Um, anything with big eyes. Yeah, anything with big eyes. Now, the greys, if you look at the depiction of the greys, they have big eyes. So they can basically wipe your memory but they don't wipe it they put a wall around it, basically uh, but they can't hide their eyes so you have an aversion to owls and deer because well that's kind of how they came to you through their screen memory <laughs> um, also you have an aversion to doctors you have an aversion to exam tables with lights because that's also uh, part of your abduction experience. Uh, they put you on an exam table with a big exam light. 
as, as part of the abduction experience. That if you're a male over 40 and you get somebody's finger stuck up your butt every time you go, once a year when you go to the doctor. Exactly, right? <laughs> so now we have implants. Hey, so huh? I gotta, I gotta get, uh, they're gonna be short a tech this morning and our boss isn't coming in. So I've gotta do, well, I don't have to, but I said I would do the, uh, some maintenance on some of the equipment so the tech coming in this morning won't be overwhelmed. So I need to uh, I need to bail and get started on I've got about 45 minutes to do an hour's worth of work. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll wrap hey. up alien abduction and we'll call it a night. Um, okay, we're, I'll stay until you wrap that up then. Yeah, uh, we're, 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 we're going over time as it is just a little bit. We're going to wrap up alien abduction and uh, then we're going to stop. Um, and again, uh, this wraps up this series, uh, next week. Uh, I don't even have my schedule in front of me, but I'll post it in fourth moon paranormal. Uh, okay. So Shara is saying, guys, we are talking, we were talking about people afraid of frogs. Okay. So if you go back and you listen to the alien race series, uh, we actually talked about, uh, a species that was a race that look like frogs, remember, right? The amphibian race. So that's always a possibility as well. So implants, your physician, uh, actually, uh, implants also were common. We, could, we already kind of brought this up, but implants were common in the nasal cavity. Uh, if you had a hole in your nasal cavity, uh, there was an implant there. Um, it also is a reason for nosebleeds. Um, but I've also had cases where uh, they've never been to the dentist before in their life, and all of a sudden they have, you know, fillings. Hmm. And, you know, the dentist is like, oh, you've got fillings before. They went to the dentist for a toothache, for example. And they're like, no, you're the first dentist I've ever seen. And we're like, well, you've got a filling in there from something. Uh, yeah, well, I, I don't know how. Uh, but, hmm. yeah, they, they put they put them in uh, nasal cavity uh, in your teeth, uh, behind your ear and today it's more uh, arms and legs so terminated pregnancy we already covered you become pregnant within a few months the pregnancy is terminated without any explanation or discharge um, and, and like I said uh, if you look at Dr. David Jacobs secret life of the alien abductee um, you, you can read all about all these from the beginning to the end. A uh, very good book. That was the first book in, back in 94 that I ever picked up. And that's what got me going with uh, abductee. Uh, okay, so we talked about females. Uh, with men, do you believe you have had intercourse in the night? Uh, that can also be on top of abductee. Uh, uh, incubus succubus. Uh, that's kind of a, it's a, a demonic entity. Um, so, it, you know, it's not necessarily an abduction on, on the male side or the female side, for that matter. Um, so you, and uh, you've had semen extracted from your body. Uh, that's the male side of it because they actually, sometimes they have intercourse with the female or they have another male abductee have intercourse with the female. Uh, so that's common. Uh, paralyzed in bed, you're walking with an immobility. For some reason, you cannot move your body for a few seconds or minutes. This is also called sleep paralysis. Um, and that's common with spirits. It's common uh, with, with, with spirit activity. It's also it, an alien abduction sign. Uh, it's also, I believe, a uh, medical phenomenon, isn't it, uh, Markham? Yeah, it's called a hypnagogic state. It's the theory is that because we were primates, we probably slept in trees, and there's a hormone that keeps us from, well, it's the hormone that keeps you from sleepwalking if it's, or kept us from falling out of the trees. <laughs> and what happens is your body wakes up, but there's enough of that hormone level that you can't move. That makes sense, I, actually. I've had that. I, I've actually had that. And also, for the spontaneous, uh, the, the disappearing fetus, mm -hmm. there is 
at, at the fourth, you know, the early stage when it's just embryonic, sometimes the body, the woman's body, will reabsorb that uh, embryo. Something went wrong. It wasn't viable. It, you know, and it just gets reabsorbed, and it looks like you had a, you know, you had your baby snatched when it right. reaction where it was actually, and this isn't that common, but it it it's common enough that it's something to look into. It, it is spontaneous abortion, and there's re- fetal reabsorption or embryonic reabsorption. Right, and, and and I agree. I agree with that. Uh, and not all cases are going to be, but the thing I, I, I keep emphasizing too: you got to look at if they fit the pattern. If they have, you know, if it's the case of not just a missing fetus, uh, if it's just a missing fetus, okay, yeah, you probably have that. But if you have the the you know the triangular puncture marks, if you have the nosebleeds, exactly. if you have a, you know more than one set of patterns. Not just the missing fetus, but you know if you if you fit the pattern, uh, that's when you start looking. Yeah, so, that, yeah, the, when the pattern emerges, when there's more than just just one of them, of yeah. The blue, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why I look at um, the balls of light, flash of light, or beams of light glimpse through the corner of your eyes or seen directly. That can be fairy as well as abduction, um, or you know on the ceiling. In, in your bedroom. That uh, can be fairy. Dreams of flying. Repeated dreams of having the ability to fly or flying over your house or a familiar area. Um, and that's where many times, and I always tell abductees, uh, you know, start a dream journal. Because um, if you're dreaming this, uh, it's probably where your screen memory is uh, starting to crumble. So start writing your dreams down. Um, strong memory, a very strong memory of something unusual such as floating. Uh, again, and also you could be very well uh, dream traveling. It has nothing to do with abduction, but it's similar to astral travel. I think I do that. Check in. I think I do that dream travel stuff. Yeah, and, and that's possible. Um, and, 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 you know, that's... <laughs> That, that, that's a gift that a lot of people have that uh, they can be working on expounding on. Uh, it has nothing to do with abduction. It's, a, it's just a, uh, it's a gift. It is fun. I know that. <laughs> Especially the flying part. I love the flying. <laughs> so the strong, okay, the strong memory of strong memory of uh, unusual is, floating through the air, lying upon an examination table, seeing a hypodermic needle, or seeing a strange skinny baby. Uh, these are all signs that the uh, screen memory is breaking down. Now, uh, also, uh, some, you know, some investigators encourage hypnotic regression. I'm not one of those. I, I you know... I'd much rather an abductee try to remember consciously versus because some doors you don't want to open, and, and some abductees can't handle what you know that part that door you might not you just don't want it open, um, and then they get depressed because well, oh my god I'm being abducted by an alien, and so uh, I I don't encourage regression on that sense. Um, if you can get that screen memory to crumble on its own and then start remembering that way, uh, it's much better. Um, so cosmic awareness, all of a sudden you have an interest in ecology, the environment, vegetarian, uh, or you just become very socially conscious for no apparent reason in your adult life, um, and that happens. Uh, that's kind of partially uh, sometimes an abduction thing where the aliens tell you, look what's going on with the Earth. Look what you're doing to the earth. Uh, and, you know, all of a sudden, where you weren't interested in it before, all of a sudden you are. Um, unexplainable, uh, unexplained events. You have no, had occurrences in your life which you cannot understand or explain to anyone. 
So here we go. Eye dreams. You remember dreaming about large eyes. And that goes back to the screen memory. Usually familiar wildlife animals such as deer, elk, moose, owl, wolf, or coyote. I remember about the dream are the unusually large eyes. Uh, you awaken in the night, sometimes frequently feeling a sense of panic or anxiety for no apparent reason. Um, that can also be a spirit. <clears throat> so fear or phobias. You have unexplainable feelings of aversion to heights, snakes, spiders, large insects, certain sounds, bright lights, personal safety. And these can also be psychiatric conditions. Now, there's a lot of things you got to rule out uh, when you look at the, at the patterns. Um, blood. You have had times when you found blood, small drops of blood on your pillow with no explanation how it got there. That goes back to the nosebleeds. Um, UFOs or aliens who had interest in these topics in your mind with no idea why. Or, you have the other, the, you know, the other side of it. You, would, you don't want to talk about aliens or UFOs. Um, so being watched, you have the feeling you're being watched most of the time, especially at night. That can also be uh, spirit, demon. Uh, if you're in the woods, fairy and Bigfoot. Electronic malfunction. Certain electronic appliances, computers, digital watches seem to malfunction in your presence with no explanation. I kind of attribute that to the implants, because um, there's been, uh, you know, there, Dr. Lear, uh, before he died, he was uh, pulling implants out, and there was shown to be a frequency that was emitting from implants, so uh, I, I kind of attribute that, same with the street lights going out as you're walking. Um, ringing in the ears, frequent or sporadic ringing in your ears, or just one ear. Um, you have a headache, especially in the sinus or in just one ear behind your eye. Um, I attribute that also to implants. <coughs> Difficulty trusting, having trouble trusting other people, especially authority figures, such as doctors. That or you've just been a med tech for 21 years, you know a rat bastard as a doctor can be. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And that pretty much sums it up. So, let's see here. I think we're going to wrap up our show tonight, folks. Uh, if you have any questions, always uh, you can you can check out Forest Moon Paranormal. Ask me questions anytime. And uh, our audience have any questions uh, before we wrap it up tonight? All righty. So you have fun for the rest of the night tonight, uh, Markham. And uh, again, Fourth Moon Paranormal will be on Spaced Out Radio Wednesday night. Uh, going to be a good show. I'm going to call in and harass. <laughs> I'm off that night, so I will not listen. All right, sounds good. Uh, so we'll uh, see y'all. I'll be listening. All right, good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right, sounds good. Um, yeah, and I'll, I don't have my schedule in front of me, but I will post it up in Forest Moon Paranormal. <clears throat> what our topic for next week is. Um, also, um, our QRT training, we will be doing uh, shielding and grounding um, protective herbs and stones for our March training. In April, we are going to Northern State Mental Hospital for our equipment training. And I hope to have our QRT actually standing up uh, by July. And then we'll actually be on Spaced Out Radio with the QRT team in, in July. So on that note, Y'all have a good night. <laughs>